If you didn't know this about me, I'm an upstanding member of a very exclusive, very powerful organization whose name is infamous across the land. The Itty Bitty Minecraft Committee. And as a powerful head of this organization, it's my duty to make adorable Minecrafts. So today we'll be making this tiny Minecraft witch's hut diorama. First things first, we're gonna need to get our clay colors in order cause we'll be using a lot of different blocks to make this build. So for now we'll be making dirt, some spruce wood, clay, and cobblestone. With a satisfying array of clay at our disposal, the challenge for me was figuring out how I could make squares good enough to fit together since perfection is all but a pipe dream for me. Then I realized I had a fondant extruder which was gifted to me because I bake a lot and that came with several different attachments to change the shape of whatever you were pushing out of it, so this was actually quite the useful tool for this build. After these went on a field trip to the oven, I turned them all into cubes, which I'll promptly have to reorganize because I'm impulsive and just wanted a cool transition, but here's how I actually cut them. I lined them up with the dots of this cutting mat and used a blade to turn the long cube into cube. With a bunch of different blocks now in my arsenal, I can begin to make the first layer of the base, and I'm starting with this because I need to know how big the swamp hut will be relative to the environment. To attach each cube, I'm using tacky glue, and I wasn't sure how strong it would be, so the first few rows, I put a layer of tacky glue beneath the blocks, but this ended up being unnecessary. I'm mostly using dirt for the first layer, cause that's the block I see most often in swamps, plus I like how seaweed looks against it, and we'll be adding a lot of that later. And now with the first layer of the base all done, we can chop down some trees and use that wood to start building our witch's hut. I have to construct each wall separately, so I began making the floor before measuring out how tall I wanted the legs to be. The water would be three blocks deep, and the house itself is three blocks tall, so I gave myself some wiggle room by making each leg seven blocks tall. Instead of using tacky glue as my adhesive, I'm going to be using bacon bond just because I want it to be extra stable. Most of the house is just regular cubes, not too different from the rest of Minecraft, but the roof has stairs as the border, so I'm cutting up some of the cubes in half for the bottom part of the stairs and in quarters for the top part of the stairs. For the ones in the corner, I'm cutting the top piece into eight. I'm gonna let all of the pieces bake and then we can assemble some more of the house. Oh, they're already done. Cool. Something about tiny Minecraft stairs just activates the two neurons in my brain. But moving on, the walls of the swamp hut are done, so I'm gonna attach them piece by piece, baking them in between applications of bacon bond. And while the house is baking, we're gonna make some accessories for the witch's hut, starting with the cauldron. I just grabbed a random cube and wrapped it in a thin piece of gray clay and gave it some teeny tiny legs. Somehow on an even cuter note, we're gonna make a red mushroom in a clay pot, so I'm chopping up some more cubes into remarkably tiny pieces and wrapping it in some terracotta clay before putting on its mushroom head. In real life, I'm super into gardening, so anytime I make a Minecraft world, I always look like a hoarder with these pots. Like, I will violently raid the villages just to get my hands on some sweet terracotta. I don't think I've ever seen a cuter, tinier mushroom in my entire life, so let's quickly put this in the correct spot before I mess it up. Seriously. Whatever, at least we got an achievement in our pot and shrooms are safe. I'm gonna attach the cauldron to the inside and then start on the absolute smallest crafting table I've ever seen. The first thing I'm gonna do is prepare my paints and start from the bottom layers of the crafting table. As you can see, it has the straps and tools on the side and a crafting grid on top. So after I give it its black outline, I can add teeny tiny details. Painting on such a small scale is quite challenging, but a sense of peril makes me feel alive and it helps me gain some experience in the realm of miniature painting. On top of that, Minecraft is a chokehold on my sense of nostalgia, so much so that making a tiny tribute for the game that I grew up with makes me feel tickled pink. Or well, tickled white in this case, but you, you know what I mean. Anyway, looks like we're about to get the achievement for making a crafting bench finally. Uh, what's this? Achievement only valid for subscribers. Okay, so you gotta subscribe before we get it. Um... <clears throat> It's sassing me now, so if you could please hurry before it becomes fully sentient. Okay, we're in the clear. Awesome, now that we have the achievement, we can move on to painting the inside of the cauldron. You honestly won't see much of these details because the roof will be covering it, but I like to think that spending a lot of time adding things that no one will be able to see in the end is a rite of passage to becoming a crafting YouTuber. 
Then I turned these solid blocks into real Minecraft wood by painting some texture on. I didn't like the first color you're seeing me use here, so I mixed up a more orange shade and used that to paint on the planks all over the swamp hut. To differentiate between the spruce planks and the oak logs, I'm painting the legs a different brown using one shade lighter and one shade darker to add that bark texture. After I finished painting on the textures, I realized there was not nearly enough tiny mushroom appearances in this episode, so I'm making two extra brown mushrooms for the hut, one for the inside and one for the outside. Only having one tiny mushroom is not enough to satiate the crafting beast inside my heart. With the shrooms in place, we can move on to the fences that you usually find around the hut. When I was looking at reference photos, I usually saw a fence in the back window, two posts in the front that are attached to the oak logs, and additionally, sometimes a fence post in the front window. I decided not to put one in the front window in the hopes that you might be able to see the inside details a bit better in the end. Now we can construct our roof and glue it down after it's been baked. The swamp hut is all done now, so we can add the rest of the layers to the base. Because this will be filled with resin, I want to make it look dynamic, kind of like I cut it out of a real Minecraft swamp, so I won't border the entire edge of the diorama with blocks. Also that way, you'll be able to see all the little details we put into the water from more than one angle. With all of our blocks in place, it's time to ready up the paint for the different textures for all the different types of blocks on our base. To texture these blocks, I'm going to be doing about three different colors for each block, and I'm going to layer them on top of each other. For example, I started on the dirt with the darkest brown, giving dots to every side of all the dirt blocks on the base. On top of the dark brown, I added a lighter shade of brown in the same manner and topped all of them off with some specks of gravel that you see inside the dirt textures. The rest of the blocks, the clay, sand, concrete, and grass, all follow the exact same formula, just with different colors. For this next part, I'm mixing up a nice green ice cream and putting that through the extruder to get tiny wiggly rolls that we're going to use as seaweed. After a quick bake, I cut them all into different lengths and started bunching them up with the help of some UV resin. Before I went any farther, I wanted to make sure it looked good, so this was my test seaweed and I don't think there are any more words needed after adorable. To create a bunch of bunches, I used my tweezers to hold onto them as I dipped one end in the resin and cured it against the parchment paper. I cured each strand as I went along and attached them wherever I felt like. I had a lot of fun with this part. I also made sure to make them all different heights, some of them one block tall and others two blocks tall. The seaweed's all done now, and I'm gonna need you to sit down for the next part of the video because somehow it's gonna get even cuter. We are making microscopic Minecraft salmon. Now I know fish don't actually spawn in swamps in Minecraft, aside from I think like tropical fish in Minecraft Bedrock, but this is my channel, so too bad. The itty bitty Minecraft committee rejects your rejection. Looking back, I do kind of wish I added some frogs as well, but you live and you learn, and we have a good amount of cute mobs here regardless. To attach all the different pieces, I'm using UV resin so those tiny parts spawn together really quickly. I just cut each color into appropriately tiny strips and looked at a picture of Minecraft salmon for two hours and somehow things worked out for me.
With the tail, fins, and all the other fish parts secure, I was going to paint on the details for the eyes and the head. As you can see here, half of their heads are teal and they have big soulless black eyes, so ask and you shall receive. I finished the fish and proceeded to add a thin coat of UV resin over the bottom of the swamp. My cubes, while very cute and tiny, are not entirely perfect, so I needed something to seal the gaps between them, that way when we pour the resin, it doesn't leak everywhere. With the base of the swamp sealed, I secure the witch's hut and begin to decorate with the fish. I'm not going to add all of them right now, I'm going to wait until after the first level of resin cures, that way we can create some depth by having some fish above others. After the first layer of resin was poured and cured a bit, I carefully placed the rest of the fish. Once they were all in place, I could pour the second layer of resin up to the top layer of blocks. While the rest of the resin is curing, I'm going to make some tiny lily pads that I'll be able to glue on top of the water. I pre-baked the light green center and pressed those into a darker green clay, cutting off the excess and baking them one more time. This was my ultimate creation for this project and frankly, all of humanity. A tiny black Minecraft cat. He ended up being smaller than my pinky nail and a bit smaller than a fourth of a penny. So here's some pictures I took of his spectacular tiny self. I took these just because I was so excited about how small he was. All right, we're in the home stretch now, so let's start making some decor for the land around the water. I'm starting with some trees, which I'm constructing using Bacon Bond, and then I'm painting on their texture. I'm using the same colors and technique for the oak wood, and the leaves are the exact same technique, just with different shades of green. No Minecraft swamp would be complete without some vines, so I'm bringing out the extruder again to make me some thin rolls of clay that I wind on top of each other. I'll bake this hole and then cut them down to size so I can attach them to the trees. Well gamers, after all the cutting, cubing, and dicing, we finally come to the end. Here is the finished Minecraft Witch's Hut diorama. So we meet again. All jokes aside, thanks for watching the video, and if you like what I do, consider subscribing. I'd love to do more Minecraft projects in the future, so let me know what other Minecrafts you'd like to see, and I'll see you in the next video, which might or might not be Pokemon related, so look forward to that.